Dr. Simon Clark, can you please introduce yourself by elaborating a little about your competencies with regards to mother tongue? Um, well, I have been in uh, language education for nearly all of my professional life and uh, I developed a special interest in it when I was uh, director for UNESCO for the Caribbean area and education advisor for the Caribbean as well. And uh, I have worked in a number of countries um, in this respect, in Africa, parts of Latin America and of course in the Caribbean. And so I have been involved with uh, mother tongue education for quite some time because I've known and understood the sheer importance of it in terms of the cognitive development of young children and how important it is to retain it in order to retain one's culture, to retain the memory of one's tradition and so on. It's important to develop the mother tongue. Curacao is like a melting pot with regards to of languages to languages in the Caribbean. What kind of benefits do you see in this? I have always been very impressed with uh, the multilingual capacity of the people in Curaçao. I just find it quite fascinating. I can't think of another country in this region, in this hemisphere, where nearly everybody that I meet will speak four languages. And uh, I think this has come about as a result of Curaçao being a melting pot of so many cultures over the many, many years that you are here. I'm not thinking only of the colonial, uh, pre-colonial times of but since then, you have had immigrants, not only from Europe, but also coming in from the rest of Latin America and the Caribbean and bringing their cultures with them. And as a result of that, Curaçao has become very rich in diversity of cultures. And quite naturally, part of the culture would be language. And there's a diversity of language as well. I mean, you go to that restaurant just down here and you speak to the waiter. She'll probably talk to you in Papiamento. She'll switch to Spanish and then to English, and then to Dutch. And the one down there told me that if you are not careful, she'll also switch with me in French. And I don't put her more than maybe 20 years old, which is fantastic. And it is a capacity that Curaçaoans have, and uh, I'm not too sure they're fully aware of it. It is so natural to everybody. Do you consider our language of Apiamento of, of great value? Of course it is of great, great value. As a matter of fact, Papiamento has developed as a, an indigenous language to an extent far greater than many of the Creole languages around, you know. Um, and I think one of the reasons for this is that you have included Papiamento in your, in your literature. There are radio stations here that broadcast in Papiamento, radio and television stations. Uh, there's a newspaper, I think, that writes in Papiamento. Parliament. Some of them. Some of them, yes. yes. Well, not all, but I gather that at least, Hello. you know. Mm -hmm. um, Parliament, I gather, is um, conducted in Papiamento. Th th therefore, the language itself is originally, is or already official. And um, as a result of that, um, it has a dignity of, of, of its own. And, and therefore, people must recognize this. It is, a, it is a language. It is a beautiful language. I like to hear it. And... Uh, I'm trying to learn it because it is, sometimes I believe I hear the Spanish coming through, but I have to be very careful because many times a word that sounds like a Spanish word is not really what it merely means in Papiamento. It's close. Um, so I think that it is a language which is greatly to be admired, and I admire it, and several other people have been exposed to it, also admire it, and it should be preserved by all means. What other language do you consider of great value for our nation? Well, it all depends on your own external connections right now. Um, you are still a part of Holland, I think. Is, yes, is that are, so? Yes. And if you are still a part of Holland from a political aspect, by a political and governmental connection, then there must be a medium of communication. So I can understand if certain people would wish to continue in Dutch. But despite that, the reality is that English is now regarded as probably the language, international language of communication. Um, as a matter of fact, 
any airline pilot will tell you that any airport that he's approaching or she's approaching in the world, they communicate in English. Whether it is Tokyo or Washington or London or Bangkok, all. So it's an, an international language that is there. And I, I, one of the most interesting things that you will find too, I gather that there are certain university courses now in Holland that are being taught not in Dutch any longer, but in English. And you must examine the reason why. I think there's a reason for this. Um, the other day I was in Stockholm in Sweden and I was taken to a number of colleges and high schools. And one of the things that I noticed was how well those Swedish kids were speaking English. So I asked them, how come? And they said, well, you know, English is a compulsory part of our curriculum and we have to learn it because we are only 8 million people in the world. And if we don't learn that language, soon we will be forgotten. I met also, when I was on the executive board of UNESCO, sitting beside me on the right was the Japanese ambassador, and usually these ambassadors got younger and younger in age, and better and better in English. And on one occasion I asked one of the young ladies who was sitting beside me as she had come to represent Japan, she spoke such good English when she made her interventions, whether she was uh, whether she lived in England or the United States. No, no, she had never lived outside of Japan. She learned English University of Tokyo. And I asked her why. Well, for the same reason. We are part of a global village, which is now, by the way, no longer a global village. It's a global human family. Mm-hmm. It's gotten smaller and smaller, especially with the modern means of communication through computer and through the satellite networks, through your iPad and and through your BlackBerry and your smartphones, come on now. Mm -hmm. And even though there's a new language developing in the use of those devices, which I'm trying to learn, the abbreviated type things. Um, How should we address the fact that mother tongue is very important to start with um, the education of our kids at schools? I think, first of all, we must look at the scientific reasons behind it. There's been a lot of research over the last 50, 60 years, which has proven that children who begin to learn in the mother tongue develop greater conceptual understanding of ideas that are presented to them. There's something that happens in the brain when they learn in the mother tongue. When they learn basic subjects, in the mother tongue, the same thing happens. Now, it's interesting to note, some people may say, well, if they learn in the mother tongue, when are they going to learn the other language? It is interesting to note that those who learn those basic concepts in the mother tongue transfer very quickly. And very quickly, they pick up, as a matter of fact, far more quickly than children who are not exposed to formal education in the basic mother tongue. And uh, it's, it's proven over and over again, because remember, though, that language and thinking are very closely related. And if you develop concepts of a child using the medium that they really can understand and utilize what you're doing, you you are expanding and stimulating the brain to develop in a certain way. If you don't do that, you are causing kids to lag behind by teaching them another language which is not natural to their mother tongue at first, they are going to struggle. I'm not saying that they're going to learn it eventually. Those who start off with the mother tongue eventually do better and research has proven that. What are, um, to your opinion, the conditions we should consider to develop our mother tongue? I think already you have made tremendous strides in using it. I would think it is not difficult to do it in schools because I gather you are now doing it in quite a number of schools that uh, Papiamintu is being taught in a number of schools or instruction is being given in Papiamento number schools. The difficulty is with the out-of-school young people and youth who are no longer within the formal system. How do you get them to understand? Because I gather that the moment you introduced some years ago the formal orthography or spelling of Papiamento words, it created a problem with people who would naturally speak it. But this has to be done. It's a particular step because if you want the language to be retained and to be developed, you have to organize it in such a way where anybody can read it and understand it. What used to happen in the past, like with quite a number of Creole languages, we write it according to how we feel. Each individual feels it should be written. And so 
What needs to be done at the adult level would be to develop programs almost like a literacy in papiamento program in which small simple booklets are presented or prepared and developed for adults along themes that adults can appreciate and understand about health, about nutrition, about tourism, you know, industry, about the home, about the environment, about fishing, you know, about travel. In Papiamento, very simply produced and illustrated as one would do in a normal program for the development of literacy in a language. And I think that is where the problem lies. The problem is not so much with the schools because teachers who are trained to do this can do this. And I gather maybe that is where one of the areas of emphasis should be, the training of teachers to use the language effectively in the classroom. And I gather that most of them are catching on, so I'm told. I don't know if I'm right here. But the main problem, as I see it, is in the out-of-school young person mm -hmm. okay. that is no longer within the formal system. And I gather that not many of them outside can even read those newspapers that are written now in Papiamento. And there's a reason for that, because they've never really been trained in any formal way to understand that this word that means so-and-so is written so-and-so. Yes. So they would not be able to recognize the word when they see it. So a program of literacy in Papiamento for out-of-school youth is what I would recommend. Okay. Dr. Simon, I think that we are aware, a lot of people is aware about the importance of the mother tongue, but we are dealing with a challenge right now. We don't have the material to address it appropriately. What you um, would you suggest us to do in this case? I am surprised that you say that you don't have the material. I remember the last time when I visited here, I was taken on a tour, I can't remember the official name of the place, called the Materials Production okay. Unit. And I was absolutely pleasantly surprised to see the sophistication of that place. The materials that were being produced there were just absolutely extraordinary. To such an extent that when I left here, I went to a number of countries and said, you guys having problems with producing materials? Check Curacao to see whether they, they can produce them for you. Mm -hmm. So that the, the physical infrastructure is already here. If you see the charts, the reading materials that come out of there, in Papiamento. What needs to happen, therefore, would be the multiplication of such a process that the schools would have no difficulty, or the out-of-school youth would have no difficulty in getting those materials that they would require for the extension of their mother tongue education. But I gather that there is another problem. Despite the fact that we know the value of education in the mother tongue and how important it is from a psychological development point of view, we understand all of that. Because of a new wave of influx of persons from Holland, uh, there is the tendency to want to go back to Dutch. Okay, now I want you to be, no, notice what I say, go back to. Every parent, to my mind, has a right, that's an inalienable right, to choose what language. That's how I see it. But the point is, we are not saying you should, is either or. It's not an either or situation. It is both. The children, people become enriched by being exposed to both. Those, I gather there are certain schools now that are totally papiamento as, as, as the language of instruction. Others are papiamento and Dutch. Others are totally Dutch. Dutch, totally Dutch, and so on, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, this is my own personal and humble opinion. As a parent, I should have the privilege, the honor, and the responsibility to select where I want to send my child because I know the language focus is going to expose my child to these languages that I want him or her to learn. What Curacao needs to do is provide those opportunities in the schools, but don't say either or. It's either Papiamento or Dutch because the reality of Dutch still exists. And those people who want to learn Dutch, power to them. Let them learn it. But the basic thing that we must never lose is the, the value of the mother tongue in developing the cognitive the, uh, areas of the young child. But those people who are coming from elsewhere who may not have that same experience, why not proceed with Dutch if they so want it? Or Spanish for that matter. So that 
the, the, the point is, it's not a either or. Curacao is a multilingual society. Every, the average person speaks four languages. And therefore, the education system should reflect that. So every graduate, like as I mentioned, every person on the road that I meet can switch from one. I try them all the time. They switch from one to the next. So develop that. You know, it's not, it's not oh, it's going to replace the, the mother tongue. No, no. It's alongside the, the, with the mother tongue. You can also introduce another language. Uh, what message uh, should you give to the parents with regards to mother tongue language? I would like to say to all parents that they should really not fear exposing their children to the mother tongue, which in this case is papiamento. I mentioned earlier on the benefits of brain development by educating the child in the early years, initial years, in its mother tongue and all of that. That the child will pick up much faster all the other subjects, all the other languages far faster if the concepts were originally developed there. Don't be afraid, even though one understands why you might be a little hesitant because you are interested naturally in the future of your kids. I mean, who wouldn't be? I am, and so are you. But in addition to the mother tongue, what I'm saying is that insist on your children also becoming proficient in at least one other international language. Because this is what has already made Curacao very special. Its ability to speak several languages and the culture here in Curacao is a very multilingual one. And I only wish that the, what I see here could be translated and transferred to the other countries with which I am associated. So expose your kids. Don't be afraid. Make sure they learn mother tongue and another or other languages. And then I would li really like to hear from you what your final recommendation would be with regard to the mother tongue. I would think, um, I would like really to suggest that we emphasize the introduction where it is not yet introduced of the instruction in the mother tongue in as many of the educational institutions as possible. I will go on to say that one of the reasons for this is that communication is very important for social cohesion, for the survival of a people as a state. It has an impact at the political, at the religious, at the educational, at the family and other social levels. When people are able to come together, it is because there is a means of communication and usually language is at the center. And if you develop a language that can create that cohesion, then you're well away into maintaining and establishing uh, social unity. Um, I was um, always for this. Um, if you develop that area, you remember that one of the main things about language is to create unity. And of course, one of the problems of not having unity is that out of that will spring crime and violence and the other problems that we find in society. If you want to get rid of all of these, first of all, people must come together and feel that they are one, feel proud of who they are as a country and as a nation. And as a result, they'll be able together as a country to tackle the development problems or challenges, not problems, that we all must face. Thank you. Thank you.